rotation, so we want to know converge or diverge. Summation, n equals 0 to infinity. So n to the 3 halves power in the denominator, and ln of n in the numerator. Oh, I better not start it at 0. We'll have problems in the numerator and denominator if I start at 0. So we'll start at 1 instead. So what in the world can we compare this to? So we could try, it's sort of P-series-like in the denominator with the P is 3 halves. So it looks pretty close to a P-series. Let's look for So I do have a note in my notes. Let's write that down. Ln of, of n grows more slowly. Then n to the c power for c anywhere between 0 and 1. So let's check this right now. So let's check this note. <coughs> so let's find the limit as n approaches infinity right here. So first of all, what do we get? ln infinity divided by infinity to the c power. Now c is between 0 and 1, so it's going to basically act not necessarily like just like the square root, but it'll act a lot like a root, uh, some root of infinity. Even if it's the 1,000th one, 1, root, or the 1,000th root of infinity, it'll still be infinity. So even if it's a really small number, it's still going to be infinity. So how do we deal with infinity over infinity? L'Hopital's rule. So there, I don't think there's any good algebra, clever algebra, that's going to get us out of this situation. So pretty much stuck with L'Hopital's rule. So we're taking derivative numerator denominator. Derivative ln is 1 over n. And let's write that as n to the negative first, actually. n to the negative first divided by. What is derivative n to the c? Yep, so it'll be c times n to the c minus 1 power. Now we have to be careful, c minus 1 is going to be negative. So we have to be a little bit careful about this. So let's rewrite it with all the n's on the denominator. So we're going to get 1 over c times n to the c minus 1 times n. So I just brought the n to the negative first power to the denominator as a reciprocal. This is convenient. n to the c minus 1 times n is just n to the c right there. So that will cancel out nicely, give us just n to the c. So we have a limit n approaches infinity, 1 over c times n to the c power. And now we're ready to finally take the limit here. So we get c times infinity to the c power. But again, because c is positive, this is going to be infinity. So infinity to a positive power is still infinity. So any questions on that? L'Hopital's rule, what we just checked out right there with that limit. I'm wondering about the derivative of n to the c. How did you get? Power rule? You just bring so you bring the power down. 
and multiply by, or and reduce the power by one. So I don't know what c is, but c minus one is one less than that number. And then we just combine that to rewrite it as n to the c power. So a little bit strange. There's only one power that doesn't follow the power rule, which is I think if c was negative one. No. Every power works for the power rule. It's only the anti-power rule that you have to watch out. So negative one in the anti-power rule doesn't work out. That's the natural log. All right, so we figured that ln of n over n to any. Now, c could be any number between 0 and 1. So we have this factor right here. So this limit is going to equal 0 for any c that I want to use. So this was all a side note right here. It will help us out, but it doesn't, it's not the solution. But let's look at what we want to find. So I want to compare. We're going to do a limit comparison. To some BN. So what does BN need to have? It needs to have an LN N in it. So it acts in a similar way. Actually, let's go ln. We'll rewrite this n to the 3 halves power. So I could rewrite it like this. That's one. No, one of those should be square root. There we go. So I could rewrite it like this. The only bad thing is a 1 over n, that part is not convergent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take more n over to the second part and less to the first part. So what in the world am I talking about? So I need some powers, a and b, and I need a plus b it needs to be 3 halves. So if I add those two powers together, I'm going to get 3 halves. So what I want to do is have this b power. I want b to be greater than 1. So I get a convergent power series on the right side. So that this term will be a convergent power series, or a convergent p series. So I'm going to choose p, uh, choose this exponent to be greater than 1. <coughs> but I also need a, this exponent, to be less than 1. So I'm going to pick a small positive number for a, and then b is going to be what's left over. So I could pick, let's see, I think we go to fourths and we should be OK. So 1 fourth plus 5 fourths, 3 halves. That looks like it works. So I'll choose 1 fourth for a, and then 5 fourths for b. So this is going to be a very difficult B n to have guessed on your own. So this B n is not obvious. So why am I doing this? I have over here, this is going to be a convergent P equals 5 fourths series. So I have a convergent P series. This term right here, the work we just did, says that the limit of this is going to go to 0. So this limit is going to go to 0. So this will converge to 0. So let's go with bn is 1 over n to the 5 fourths power. So forget that bn, we'll go, we're going to choose bn to equal 1 over 
and to the 5 fourths power. I know that summation 1 over n to the 5 fourths n equals 1 to infinity is a convergent p equals 5 fourths series. So I'm going to compare the limit of an over bn. So the same thing that we do for all the uh, limit comparison tests. So I'm going to make my comparison. So an, I'm going to use the version that we wrote down here. This ln n over n to the fourth, uh, one fourth power times one over n to the five fourths power. So I'm going to use that version. So this is an. Now what is Bn? Bn is right here. So there's An, and then reciprocal of Bn I'm going to place here. N to the 5 fourths divided by 1. All right, so that is An times Bn. Right. I, the way I broke an down may not be obvious as to why I did it, but it should, you should definitely believe an is could be broken down the way I did here. So now we're just going to cancel out simple algebra cancel cancel. This is the reason I did it, and so that would cancel out. And we just did all the work above. Lim n approaches infinity ln of n divided by n to the one fourth power equals zero. So that was a limit we just did above. Now when you get zero or infinity on the limit comparison test, you have to read the fine print. Because that's not the normal outcome. So they both don't behave the same, but we're going to scroll up to the limit comparison test and see what happens when we got zero. Which I think is the third outcome. Here we go. Second outcome. So we're dealing with number two. So if this limit is zero and BN converges. So I chose a convergent P series for the BN. So I got my limit is zero and BN converges. The conclusion is that's perfectly timed. <laughs> the conclusion is that our original A AN converges. <coughs> All right. So we got the it's going to be weird when you're in situation two or three and it works out. You're going to pick something that's not exactly like what you started with. You'll basically be using an estimation. So again, we're in situation two. Our limit was zero. We picked a convergent series, P series. So our original one converges. So our comparison was zero by the limit comparison test. I'm going to put a little 2 in here because we're, we're using the part 2. So I got my limit is 0. Up here I got Bn converges. So this is the other part that I needed right here. Bn converges. My limit is 0. So by limit comparison test, the second part, summation An converges. So our original AN is going to converge. So what you should be wondering is how did I know that was going to happen at the very beginning? That's what you should be wondering. 
One of the answers is because I've done this before. Uh, the answer that you want to hear is I looked at ln n divided by n to the 3 halves, and I know that natural log of n grows very slowly. It grows how slowly? It'll grow more slowly than n to any small positive power, even way down to a quarter. I could have gone to an eighth or a tenth or a twentieth or even a hundredth if I wanted to. Why did I not break it down? So I broke it down in a weird way right here. It is also true that I could have written it as ln n divided by square root n times 1 over n. This would not be great, although the first, this first part would go to 0. When I took a limit, the second part is a divergent harmonic series. And for the uh, part two in the limit comparison, I need a convergent series. So if I, if I broke it down this way, because 1 over n is not convergent, I can't use a limit comparison test to get a conclusion here. So I had to put more, that's why I said I had to put more n over there and less n over here. So I can put a small amount of n over here as I want, which I just chose a quarter and then put the extra quarter on, on this side over here. Yes? At what point should we realize that it's case two? That's a good question. A lot of the problems would be case one. If it's just a simple uh, adding or subtracting some number, like a lot of the other examples, we just threw away basically low powers, you're generally going to be in case one. This one was different because we had a natural log combined with the power of n. So there wasn't, I couldn't just simply say, oh, forget about that plus three. There was no plus three to forget about. Uh, if the problem did look a little bit different, for example, if there was like a minus four, I could pretty much ignore the minus four. And my, limit, my first, I could just say, oh, that minus four won't matter. And I would compare it to ln n over n to the three halves without the minus four. So if it's something like you're just adding a number somewhere, that generally won't affect it. Now you have to be very careful because, let's take that out. This is very different than this summation. Because this summation, yeah, you're subtracting four, but you're subtracting four an infinite number of times here. Do you see that? So this minus four is very important. When n is really big, we saw the limit of this is going to go to zero, but it's always going to be, it's going to get closer to adding up negative four, negative four, negative four, negative four, negative four. So this would actually be negative infinity if you kept adding these together. So just because it's a minus a constant, you have to be careful about where that minus constant is located. A lot of intuition. So I think on your final and your, uh, well, you, you'll design your last quiz however you want, but on your actual final exam, I think, uh, I plan to choose a limit comparison test problem that would just be, you could solve it by comparing it and getting just case one, or they behave the same. Occasionally on some of the homeworks, you may have to get a little bit more creative. And so this is just an example where uh, I saw the numerator is not very powerful. Natural log does not get big that quickly. It will go to infinity, but it goes more slowly than n to any positive power. So even a super small power like uh, n to the one fourth still beats it. So that's the end of comparison tests. So now we have two tests that are, in my opinion, the most widely applicable. So you got integral test, you have limit comparison test. There's nth turn test for divergence also, but that's, that can only tell you if it diverges. So that's not a general test. The root and the ratio tests are the next two. 
and they're probably the most useful ones. So this is section 10.5, root and ratio. And after this, we go alternating series tests, and then we get into actual power series and Taylor series. So we'll go ratio test is my personal favorite. We'll do that one first. So if we start out with a series, we'll go with AK. And I'm not saying where they start because the starting value is not that important. You're going to go to infinity, so whatever number you start at is actually irrelevant. So this is a series uh, with AK greater than or equal to 0. Nope, not equal to 0. So AK is greater and not equal to 0. So let me write that a little bit more clear. So normally I just write greater than 0, but I'm explicitly writing not equal below it, so we know it's definitely not 0. So it needs to be positive. So this looks a lot like a P. It's actually a row. It's pretty much a flipped over. Is that a 6? I don't know. It looks a lot like a P, but it just doesn't have a. It's very hunched over. It's like a humpback, hunchback, whatever, P. You can just write P if you really want to. So P is going to be the limit of k approaches infinity of AK plus 1 over AK. So this feels a lot like the limit comparison test, except I'm comparing a term against the one that comes after it. So I'm comparing consecutive terms here. And if rho is greater than 1, it diverges. Rho less than 1 converges. And if rho equals 1, inconclusive. That's all there is to the ratio test. You don't have to invent another series, something that's close. You can just look at the ratio of the terms, the nth term and the n plus first term. So this just basically says if your term after your previous term, if that ratio eventually goes to 0, your series will converge. So that's the ratio test. And the root test is very similar. you are allowed to be 0 in this root test. So you get, uh, how do we start this one? If summation AK has your terms, they are allowed to equal 0 now. So greater than or equal to 0 for all K. And I should have written that up, all K. We're going to let, we'll go row again, equal. So same limit, except now we're looking for the kth root of AK. And of course, the kth root could be written as a 1 over K power. So whichever of the two forms works better, go for it. You don't probably don't need to write both on your formula page. You should know the kth root is 1 over k power by now. So it has the exact same conclusion. Um, we'll go greater than 1 diverges. So rho greater than 1 diverges. Rho less than 1 converges. And row equals 1, inconclusive. So just to warn you, if one of these two tests is inconclusive, usually the other one will also be inconclusive. So if one of them won't tell you convergence or divergence, usually the other one will be also inconclusive. So how do you know which one to use? It should be very obvious when to use a root test. The ratio test works 
a lot of the time. So we'll just start doing some problems and we'll see when is it good to use which test. So you're going to have the same issue when you're doing problems of convergence divergence is knowing which test to use. When you're doing your homeworks, you know that the ones from 10.5 can be solved with root or ratio. When I give you a series, I won't say, hey, hint, hint, use the ratio test. So you need to decide which test you want to use. So that is where things are not obvious. So in order to really get practice problems, what you might be a good thing is go inside your textbook, pull random problems from different sections, and then scramble them together so you don't know what sections they came from. And then see, can you go and figure out uh, what method to use. And a lot of these you can, there's more than generally one test that'll work on a series. So don't think, ah, oh, this has to be a ratio test problem because it came from this section. So every example we're just going to do is convergence or divergence. So I'm pretty sure we actually did a problem like this and got the number that it converged to. We did this by writing 2 to the n over 3 to the n plus 5 over 3 to the n, which is 2 thirds to the n plus 5 times one third to the n and said geometric series plus convergent geometric series plus convergent geometric series means the whole thing converges. So we did a very similar problem to this before. So only one of you are nodding, but hopefully the rest of you vaguely remember this. What I'm not going to do is use geometric series this time around. So yeah, you can absolutely do that and compare it and say it's basically two geometric series added together and they're both convergent. Because there are is two thirds and one third. So I already see that as convergent. But let's use the root or ratio test to do convergence or divergence here. So when in doubt, go ratio. So let's do the ratio test. So what I really need is a n plus one. So what does that look like? Two to the n plus one plus 5 over 3 to the n plus 1. So that is a n with 1 more added to n. So that's a n plus 1. So I want to figure out what is a n plus 1 over a n. So I'm, before I apply a limit, let's just do some algebra. And then I'll put a limit on at the end. So we're going to have fraction of fractions. So we'll just go ahead and write it as the product with the reciprocal. So there's a n plus 1 times the reciprocal of a n. What algebra can I do? I could. Let's do something that will simplify. Is it algebra one question? Maybe algebra two? I could. Let's look at the threes. So there's one more three on the bottom than there is on the top. Do you see that? There's n, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 n times, and then there's an extra 3 in the denominator. So let's take care of that first. So I'm going to not completely cancel. So I'll write it as 2n plus 1 plus 5, and 2n plus 5 times 1 third. 
So I just rearrange the order of the fractions. Sure. So So that's definitely true. I could change the order like that. Just change A B is B A, commutative property. And so this is B over C. So I can change the order of the products in uh, when I multiply fractions. So all I did was I just basically wanted D to appear underneath A. So I said the two things I circled are similar. So you could basically think I'm just going to swap the location of the bottom right there. All right, so we're going to take a limit now. This looks a lot nicer to take a limit of. So first things first, one third, that's got no n in it. So we'll move that out front. So that should be pretty obvious. First step. So it's gonna be affinity over infinity. L'Hopital's rule. Or we can do algebra instead. So those are generally the two ways to go when you get infinity over infinity. If you can do L'Hopital's rule, you can go for it. Otherwise, algebra is a really good alternative. So I see there's an extra 2 in the numerator. So let's write this as two times 2 to the n plus 5 halves. Why am I doing this? Because what is not important when I'm looking at this limit, that plus 5 and the plus 5 aren't going to make a very big difference. Um, even when n is only around 100, that 2 to the 100 power is a huge number. Plus 5, not a big deal. So I could do this move. Now I don't care that it's plus 5 halves or plus 2 at this point. So I'm going to get 2 thirds lim and approaches infinity. Now, unfortunately, L'Hopital's rule, if I apply it, I'm basically going to get back to 2 to the n, 2 to the n, no matter how many times I keep applying it. So what I'm going to do instead is multiply by 1 over 2 to the n divided by 1 over 2 to the n. I think we did something really similar recently. So we get 2 thirds lim and approaches infinity. 1 plus 5 over 2 to the n plus 1 divided by 1 plus 5 over 2 to the n. And now I see that what I'm circling, both separately are going to 0 because the denominators are getting really big. So those two are both going to 0. So I'm left with 1 over 1. So my final answer is of the uh, ratio is 2 thirds. And all this, this was rho equals two-thirds. So what do I get to conclude? Converges, less than one, so it converges.
So somewhere you need to tell me ratio test. I think I may have written it at the beginning. Yeah, ratio test. So you can either at the beginning tell me you're using the ratio test, or you can write converges by the ratio test. So the answer is it converges. We use the ratio test, and we got our row is 2 thirds. There are lots of ways to show convergence or divergence. So I just said geometric series is a completely separate approach to this problem. So we'll go number two, our next example, summation n squared divided by 2 to the n. So we got n squared in the numerator and 2 to the n power in the denominator. So we're going to go ratio test again. So I need a n plus 1. Do this carefully wherever you see an n. Write n plus 1. So what should I write? So this actually is grouped up properly. Parentheses. So whole thing square all of n plus 1. So let's look for the uh, actual ratio part of the ratio test. So we have n plus 1 squared divided by 2 to the n plus 1 multiply by the reciprocal of a n, which is 2 to the n over n squared. So what immediately reduces? 2 to the n plus 1. So 2 to the n plus 1, 2 to the n. So there's one more 2 on the bottom. So we'll get 1 half times, we'll combine the other two pieces. Now we need to find limit. So first things, let's take out the constant 1 half. So it's 1 half times lim So do some work and tell me why this is equal to 1. Well, times the half that's already out there. I think this is an e easy low Pitalis question. Or you can do the algebra we did before. Or you can FOIL if you're a FOILer. You can n squared plus 1, it's n squared plus 2n plus 1. So however you want to approach it. I'll give you one minute.
So if you want L'Hopital's rule, you probably had to apply it twice. So your derivative will be something like 2n, 2n, and then actually at that point, maybe you'll be able to just cancel it out. So either way, you should have gotten 1 out of your limit, and then don't forget about that 1 half. That's really important. So questions on ratio test. So next example, summation 2 to the n over n cubed. So beginning to end, I want you to finish this. Use a ratio test here. You should have gotten divergence with a limit of two. So the way I handled this limit, I could have gone L'Hopital's rule three times in a row. I also could have multiplied this out by itself three times. So n plus one cubed is n cubed
n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n <coughs> plus 1. And if I multiply it out with the binomial theorem, you could multiply it out by itself a couple times to get that also. What <coughs> I need to look at, our original was n cubed over n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. What mattered was the high powers. So the 3n squared plus 3n plus 1 was not important. So I can basically look at these two, and then this is going to behave like n cubed over n cubed, which is going to behave like 1. I can only do this when we're approaching infinity or negative infinity. So if we're not going to infinity, I can't do this if we were going limit and approach as 4. So I can't throw away all the low powers if we're not going to infinity. So we have two more problems we're going to do out of this, and then alternating series goes really quickly. There's not very much alternating series. You got three properties you satisfy, your alternating series converges.